Tom, sure, yeah, a couple. No. And, and just to take off on your question, so I started using trade ideas in um, April of 2016. Uh, I had a group of clients that were just simply not happy with what was going on in the world markets. Um, we decided to take a, a piece of that portfolio, call it five or ten percent, and apply it to these types of ideas. And so I've been doing this now since that day. And um, what I find is I find that this tool allows me as an advisor to come to the table with ideas that otherwise wouldn't have wouldn't have been you know available to me, right? So if I'm using predominantly a lot of managed money with my clients, then one of the ways that I deliver value to that relationship, and we have to deliver value almost every day, uh, one of the ways that I deliver value is to you know, incorporate these ideas into that portfolio. So if, if you think about that core portfolio being managed money, then I'm going to satellite that with a few ideas, either on the alpha side for, you know, for growth, if it's a growth-oriented investor, if it's a retiree, I'm going to look more on the yield side. Uh, you, know, you know, Andy's been instrumental, and I work with Andy quite a bit um, to, to help me uncover ideas, uh, especially for my retirees who are looking to augment their retirement income. Sure. And he was a instrumental in being able to craft very quickly one of those filters to help me identify great yield opportunities. And more importantly, where in that cycle, where in that 52-week range is that potential yield opportunity because as you can imagine what I want to do is I want to try to buy it at the lower end of that range pick up a good yield and then allow it to do what it does over time right and if I can continuously do that using this software then at the end of the day what does that mean for me that means more referral business that means you know more assets under management so on and so forth Uh, so the question, the question is, you know, how long am I holding these, uh, in, these ideas in my client's portfolio? And, and, you know, part of the answer to that is, you know, it depends upon the client's, obviously, their time frame. But what I have, what I have found, you know, even though what you're seeing here today is, is really geared in that intraday trading regime, no, no question about that, what we have found, what I have found and others have found is that if I can take these ideas in some cases, I'm finding excellent opportunities to find it at the right point and hold it for what it, it could be weeks, it could be months, uh, but I'm finding that this tool is a great identifier uh, of opportunities that we can hold for weeks or months even. Uh, and so it, it really has just depended upon both the client situation, the client's time frame, as well as where we were able to find it. Just to pick up on that, Eric, that was a great question. We, we do an analysis that we'll look at. If you follow the trading plan exactly in a risk-off mode, uh, you'd have a return of X. And if you went beyond in the risk-on mode, um, where, how much more would you, would you, would you potentially make or, or lose? And what we find is, especially with our trades of the week, the, the ones that we send out, we, don't con we, we have a stop loss and a, and a stop loss and a profit target. And we have a rule that says if there's a correction on a profit more than 20 percent it's time to kind of end the position and that's a general rule that we have as part of that weekly you know, idea but it's still in the hands of every individual which is why maybe I thought Hakeem's question was going to skirt on this I often get the question that look your AI is a service right you're not just for fund investors you'll give this to anybody and if anybody and everybody starts using it right. won't there be a kind of you know, won't it all be arbitraged away? That's well, my first response is, that's a wonderful position to be in. I hope one day we get there. But even when we get there, that's not necessarily going to be the case because, because of this aspect that it's not doing the trading for you okay. uh, throughout the life of the trade. And if I gave everyone a recipe for, you know, the salmon dish we're going to have today, we'd have maybe three that came out with salmon. We'd have four fruit salads. We, we would have something completely different out of everybody making that, trying to make that same dish or follow that recipe. Some people won't, some people will, some people will come up with something altogether. And it's that beauty, I guess, or that, that diverse uh, in terms of the number of outcomes, regardless of what we, the, the, all that we do is we provide this guidelines for making a decision. And in life, it's often good to know when you're on the path, and it's equally important to know when you go off the path. What's hardest is when you're just in a fog. We try to lift that fog.
and, you know, and you heard David mention earlier in the presentation uh, that the New York Stock Exchange uses this product. So I actually had a chance to be with David up in New York a, a few weeks ago. We were actually on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange visiting with the, one of the floor governors and one of the employees. And we, we simply were there to, to help them configure the software, but, you know, had a chance to ask them, so wh why are you using this? And, and so the simple reply was that, look, you know, we're getting calls from the CEOs of these companies on a regular basis, especially when price activity either goes outside the norm or some, some event happens, right? And so what happens? Well, they get a call from that CEO and says, why is my stock doing this? Those guys immediately go to trade ideas on their screen and they look at a particular, Andy, can you pull that up? I don't know if you can pull that up. They go up to a particular window called the derived data stream. They've got 850 stocks that they keep up with inputted into that system and they can immediately go to that stock and say, okay, this is why, this is why the stock's doing what it's doing. And then they can turn around and talk to that CEO and say, this is why it's happening. This is what's going on in real time. And I, I found that to be particularly impactful. I, I, had, I had only learned about this just a few months ago, but when I realized that, you know, arguably the, one of the most important exchanges in the world is using trade ideas to help inform CEOs and the executive C-suite about their stock, that, that meant something to me. Absolutely meant something to me. And, and so now I, I have the same I have the same data as the guys on the floor, right? In real time, instantaneously, and I can see the same thing they see, right? And that's, that's what gives me a lot of confidence in, in using this. Um, again, I mean, you know, I, I started trading in 1983, and back then, you know, individual investors made up a significant part of the daily volume of the, of the exchanges. Today, that's no longer the case, right? Over 60% of the volume is, is, is either high-frequency traders or computer-to-computer -computer algorithmic functioning. And if that's the case, then I want to be able to look my client and my prospect in the eye and say, I use AI as a part of my process. With all the competition out here today and all the press around robo-advising, I can look my client in the face and say, yes, this is a part of my process as a financial advisor to you as my client. And I can tell you, and you all probably don't need me to, to go any further, you understand the dynamic there, right? Especially our, our younger prospects, right? Especially the, you know, the millennial types and, and those who are very, very tech savvy. So um, I'm finding it to be a very useful tool. Uh, it, it's actually giving me an edge, if you will, as it relates to coming to the table with ideas. And, and you know, I can either I can use the fundamental research that we've all been accustomed to over these decades and combine it with, you know, because of, you know, because of the market structure today, which is so computer oriented, technical analysis, good, bad, right or wrong, technical analysis is now critical in that decision making process. And I've got a tool, see, I don't, <laughs> I don't have to be the expert, right? I don't have to, I, I've got a tool now that allows me to, in, in real time, have a conversation with that client around that portfolio. And then if I get a real, you know, if I, it is, as David said, sometimes you get an engineer type to deal with, right? And I can pick up the phone and I can talk to Andy or any of the other staff at Trade Ideas to either come up with, you know, a, additional answers around that question or I'll even just pick up the phone and talk to him time to time and say, T tell me where, you know, what is your thinking around where we are in the current cycle? And where do you see are the opportunities? One, one such example came up where, you know, look, we, we've been reaching new highs every other month, right, in the markets. Think about this. Think about guys like Jim Chanos, right, the, the most famous short seller of all, Jim, Jim Chanos. Well, what happens when we reach new all-time highs? Well, those guys tend to get a little nervous, and what will they do? They will start to close out that position. So Andy and his team came up with a filter that identifies all the what we call low float stocks that have a high short interest. And from that one screen, we have been able to uncover some phenomenal opportunities to pick up stocks that are being, you know, what we call squeezed, the short squeeze, right? Weight Watchers, if you saw on the trade of the week screen a few slides ago, Trade of the week was exactly one of those uh, stocks, and it's gone, you know, <laughs> exponential, and it's because, again, 
you know, the, the, what do you call it, the Oprah effect or whatever you want to call it. But the point is, is that those shorts got, started getting nervous. They were closing that position, and we were able to capture that right as it was moving up. And it's been a, it's been a great investment. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Thomas.